Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, here we are again another Sunday before you. We have sang the songs of Zion. We have shared peace with one another. And now we come to the entree of our meal. Help us, Lord, to breathe, even when it feels a little muggy. And help us to listen, even when there are distractions that call for our attention. Help each of us gathered here today to receive a word from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Sermonic theme for today is take me with you. Take me with you. Karen, James, and Spence had finished medical school. In medical school, these three became the best of friends. Somewhere along this journey, they decided they wanted to drive from London all the way to Cape Town, South Africa. Before starting their jobs, before their life got busy, they decided they wanted to make this venture. There is a Euro tunnel from Spain to Morocco, making it possible to actually drive a car from London to Cape Town. Each of them had saved 10,000 apiece to make this trip possible. They rec recruited a used sturdy car from one of their loved ones and did the necessary repairs and additions to make this car suitable for their rugged travels across Africa. They put a tent on top of the car for sleeping. They then named this transporter, their car, Edna. They decided to vlog their travels and they set off on their journey March 13th of this year. They are at, they are at 102 days of travel today. They have spent many days sleeping in nature and some days they have stayed at hotels. As their travels have continued and they have gained a following, they have even been hosted by dignitaries in some of the countries that they've driven through. And they all have also stayed in places where there were bed bugs and the facilities were so awful they couldn't sleep peacefully at night. At several points in their journey, it appeared the rough terrain was too much for Edna. At one point, it appeared that Edna could make it. The back part of Edna was really unhinged from the front part after several repairs. Even Toyota, made aware of the situation by South Africans, offered a brand new SUV for Karen, James, and Spence to continue their journey. All of us are on a journey. Last week, a few of our members traveled out of state, Texas, Georgia, Nepal, even out of the country. We are traveling to various places this summer. Some of us have traveled, some of us will travel. If we traveled on a certain day of this week, we even got stuck in airports as the crowd strike outage caused major delays and impacted our airports, banks, and media outlets, reminding us that often the journey is complicated. We travel to doctor appointments hoping to hear good, favorable news. Some of us live in Hyde Park, we travel around the neighborhood, and then some of us even travel to church on Sunday. We travel to work, we travel on errands. Oh, those errands go on and on. We travel to visit others and share our resources with the night ministry. Some of us this week even travel to the Republican National Convention to listen to their platform, and we'll travel to the Democratic National Convention as well. But we are on a journey. This is where we find ourselves today in the biblical text. David had finally made it with the ark to Jerusalem. We know from last week there were a few bumps on the journey, causing David to even abandon his mission. But eventually David returned and continued his journey to get the ark as instructed by God to Jerusalem. Mission accomplished. And now feeling good about doing what God had asked of him, he starts to think, I have this beautiful home, but the ark does not have a home. The ark resides in a tent. The ark has been wandering around in temporary unstable spots. This did not set well with David. I should build a home for the ark. 
He's quite taken with his idea, and as ideas go, he decides to share it with Nathan. Nathan is like, that sounds like a good idea, and he co-signs on with David. But later in the night, God visits Nathan, and God puts a yellow light on David's plans. God says, I've been moving around with you all for a while, and you never built me a home. Why now? I've been with you thus far, even when you faced your enemies. I've been with you, and I want to make a home for my people. God concludes, you don't need to build me a home. I got this, and I will continue to follow, follow my people. Where my people are, there I am. From time to time, the people of God have had to be reminded, even with the beautiful edifices and maintenance that sometimes we get bogged down in, that God is much closer to us in proximity. Sometimes we can get wedded to the things and forget the presence of God is here. And the presence of God follows us. Not just David, but his descendants, said God. Not just his descendants, but us today. Today we're reminded in this text that we are not alone. How many of you have felt alone, though? Sometimes it feels like you're all alone in the world. Sometimes when obstacles come, it feels like we're all on our own. You may feel like that, but the text says today, we are not alone. We are not on this journey alone. Even if we do not have a Karen, a James, and a Spence, we have God. And when we leave our homes, we can be more aware that God is with us in proximity. When we travel to our appointments, God is with us. On various parts of the trip, Karen, James, and Spence, it got a little scary. There were some corruptions they encountered. There were some bumpy, unpaid roads. There were some experiences that were dangerous. But there also was a lot of hospitality. There was wildlife. There were dunes and sand and oceans. There were experiences they never could have prepared for. That's what our journey is like. It's bitter and it's sweet. We do not know what we will experience on this journey. We do not know the road ahead. We don't know know what will happen when we leave church today. There are all kinds of encounters awaiting us. And sometimes they're scary, but sometimes they're joy-filled. Sometimes they're life-changing. But God is with us, says the text. God follows us around. Have you ever been in a store and feel like you're being followed around? Just use that imagery. God follows us around. Where you are, God is there. And that's important for us to remember, to continually remind ourselves when we get in those situations, where you are, God is there. Karen, James, and Spence turn down an offer from Toyota. Their car continued to get in more and more trouble, and then it really broke down. Some of us were perplexed that had been following them, about why they would turn down a brand new car, a brand new Toyota SUV, never driven by anyone else. But when they were offered this this car, compared to their old failing car that keep needing repairs and was eating into their 30,000. But they said, we've invested in Edna. There are many little features to Edna that made this journey possible. Edna had been specifically configured for the journey that lay before them. Edna has built-in backup batteries as well as extra fuel tank, which allows them to camp and to cook and to power devices and to travel to more remote locations where refuel might not be possible. They had spent months before they got on the road preparing Edna for the trip from London to South Africa. Edna was one of them, and no other car would do for where they wanted to go. I get goosebumps here. We are on a journey, and maybe we're not going to South Africa. Well, some have been, some may go. Maybe we're not necessarily going to South Africa, but nevertheless, God has us on a journey. We travel. And this journey is filled with lots of spontaneous, wonderful moments. In the words of Martin Luther, this life, therefore, is not righteous, 
but growth in righteousness. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. At some point in our journey, in our life, like the trio, we have to decide that Edna was the one. We have to also decide that God is the one. God is the Alpha and Omega. God is the one to travel with us on this journey. God is the one to make the trip. God is the one you take to the doctor's often, office. And when we become unhinged, God is the one in the wilderness. God is the one when we break down. God is the footprints in the sand. God is the one behind the wheel. God is the one determining what's next if we let God. God is the one to get us through this thing we call life. God is the one. Don't leave home without God and keep God close. You know, I tell you all the time, I get in my car and I discover it. I don't have my phone and I go back in the house. Don't leave home without God. Keep God real, real close. At night, on my nightstand, I often put a cup of water. I put it there because when I wake up, I want to begin my water intake for the day. I put some other things there too with the same intent for all of those things that I put on my nightstand. I want them there so that they can be close because I have need of them. I have need of the water. We have to likewise keep God that close on our nightstand so that on our journey, we are always aware that God is there. Keep God close and take God, take God with you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, a few weeks ago in the lectionary text, we were reminded of the story of you sending the disciples out two by two, not alone. They were sent out on a journey to spread good news all along the way. They did not know what they would encounter. They did not know what each day would bring. They only had to show up and be closer and share good news. As we go on our journey, we don't know what we will experience, but with God's presence, we are more than okay. As we go on our journey of life, may we continually be reminded you are right there with us. We don't have to face anything at all alone because where you are, where we are, there you are too. Amen.